everyone. In the previous class, we learnt about the factors influencing uh, the rock mass tunnel support interaction phenomenon. And then we started our discussion with the Ladani's elastoplastic analysis of tunnels. We discussed about the basic assumptions which are taken uh, during the analysis of the tunnel using this method. So, today we will learn about the analysis of stresses and the deformation. So, just to recall this is what is the geometry of the problem where you have the excavation having the radius r i and it is subjected to internal support pressure which is p i. There is going to be the broken rock zone in the vicinity of the uh, tunnel and then you will have the elastoplastic boundary with the radius r e and beyond that the rock is considered to be intact rock which will behave in an elastic manner. Any point in the rock or rock mass here that will be represented by r comma theta. So, let us start with the analysis. You need to keep in mind that we have considered the problem to be symmetry. So, for the case of the cylindrical symmetry, the differential equation of equilibrium is written as d sigma r dr plus 1 upon r sigma r minus sigma theta equal to 0. So, in continuation with the previous class, I am marking this equation as equation number 3. If we solve this equation for the linear elastic behavior and uh, along with the uh, boundary conditions. So, what are going to be the boundary conditions? So, we will have at r is equal to r e sigma r will be given by sigma r e and at r tending to infinity sigma r will become equal to p naught which is the state of the in situ stress and if you recall uh, we assume that there is the hydrostatic state of stress. So, we have this stresses in the elastic uh, region this we have seen earlier that is sigma r will be p naught minus p naught minus sigma r e r e upon r whole square and sigma theta is p naught plus p naught minus sigma r e to r e upon r whole square. So, I will make this equation as 4 and this equation as 5. Now, can you recall we had this expression as sigma r as uh, p naught 1 minus a square upon r square. So, these equations 4 and 5 they are coming from this consideration only that is in the elastic domain this is how you are going to have the uh, stresses. So, the for the broken zone the failure criterion uh, that was given by equation number 2 it uh, must be satisfied. So, what was that equation sigma 1 was equal to sigma 3 plus m r into sigma c into sigma 3 plus s r into sigma c whole square to the power half recall that this was our equation number 2. So, in our case uh, we have uh, sigma 1 to be equal to sigma theta and uh, sigma 3 is equal to sigma r. So, we can write this equation 2 equation 2 can be rewritten as sigma theta as sigma r plus m r sigma c into sigma r because sigma 3 is sigma r now plus s r into sigma c whole square to the power half make this equation as equation number 6. Now, if we take equation number 3 and equation 6, so what we get 
so from equations 3 and 6 one gets d sigma r dr as minus 1 upon r sigma r minus sigma r minus m r sigma c sigma r plus s r into sigma c whole square to the power half or we can write d sigma r d r is equal to 1 upon r see this and this will go uh, this will become m r sigma c into sigma r plus s r into sigma c whole square to the power half. So, this is what that we are going to get. Now, take a look at this equation and uh, if we integrate it with respect to r, we can get the expression for sigma r. So, let us uh, do that. So, when you integrate this, you will get some constant. To determine those constant, we need to use the boundary conditions. So, we are considering the boundary condition as r is equal to r i, we are going to have sigma r as equal to p i. So, what we have here as sigma r as m r into sigma c upon 4 ln r upon r i whole square plus ln r upon r i into m r sigma c p i plus s r into sigma c whole square to the power half plus p i. This is equation number 7. Therefore, at r equal to r e we can write this equation 7 as sigma r e is equal to m r sigma c upon 4 ln r e upon r i whole square plus ln r e upon r i into m r sigma c p i plus s r into sigma c whole square to the power half plus p i. So, I will make this equation as equation number 8. So, to obtain the expression for the elastoplastic boundary that is r e. It is essential for us to satisfy the failure criterion of the intact rock mass at uh, r is equal to r e plus that means r e plus delta r e where delta r e is tending to 0. So, what we are going to have is as the failure criterion will be sigma 1 minus sigma 3 that is equal to m sigma c into sigma 3 plus s into sigma c whole square to the power half. This was our equation 1 if you recall that was for the original rock mass. So, this uh, can also be written as sigma c into m sigma 3 upon sigma c plus s to the power half. So, I am marking this equation as equation number 9 and on the left hand side of course, you have sigma 1 minus sigma 3. So, what we have here now is sigma 1 is equal to sigma theta e and sigma 3 is equal to sigma r e. So, we use uh, the expressions 4 and 5 at r is equal to uh, r e. So, using the expressions 4 and 5 at r is equal to r e. Uh, so, what we have is uh, 
sigma r e is equal to p naught minus p naught minus sigma r e into r e upon r e whole square and we have sigma theta e as p naught plus p naught minus sigma r e r e upon r e whole square. So, I am just substituting r is equal to r e. So, this will come uh, 1. So, what we have is mm, sigma theta e minus sigma r e that is equal to 2 times p naught minus sigma r e. So, from these two equations I will be able to get this expressions. So, therefore, we can have 2 times p naught minus sigma r e as here it is sigma theta e minus sigma r e and we just now saw that these are also respectively equal to sigma 1 and sigma 3. So, we can write them uh, as uh, sigma 1 minus sigma 3 and if we apply the uh, material properties from the equation number 1, then sigma 1 minus sigma 3 can also be written as R e is sigma c into m sigma 3 upon sigma c plus s to the power half. So, from here I can find out sigma r e as p naught minus half sigma c m sigma 3 upon sigma c plus s to the power half or we can have sigma r e is equal to p naught minus capital M times sigma c. I will make this equation as equation number 10 where this capital M is written as half m sigma 3 upon sigma c plus s to the power half or it can also be written as half m upon 4 whole square plus m p naught upon sigma c plus s to the power half minus m upon 8. Then we equate the expressions. eight and ten for sigma r e what is going to be the radius of elastic plastic boundary we will have it as r e is equal to r i into e to the power n minus 2 upon m r into sigma c into m r into sigma c into p i plus s r into sigma c whole square to the power half and the complete bracket 2. So, this whole expression is in exponential. So, I will mark this equation as equation number 12 where uh, we have introduced another term n which is equal to 2 upon m r into sigma c m r sigma c p naught plus s r into sigma c whole square minus m r sigma c square into m to the power half. Okay, uh, so after having this expression of n, we can have the condition that is when we have the required support 
pressure. Pi is greater than Pi critical then the entire rock mass will be in the elastic state. But if we have uh, this Pi is less than or equal to Pi critical then there is going to be the development of the broken zone where what is this uh, pi critical that is equal to p naught minus m times sigma c please remember this expression so this is how we can uh, have the analysis of uh, stresses so to start with the analysis of uh, deformation again let us take a look at uh, this uh, figure so you have the excavated tunnel boundary that is uh, r o where after the radial deformation u i that becomes as r i and then uh, this is the plastic zone and beyond that again you have the elastic zone. So, basically uh, this one is uh, giving you the idea about the elastoplastic uh, boundary. So, the u e is the radial displacement at the elastic plastic boundary which is uh, produced by the reduction of sigma r from its initial value of p naught to sigma r e and it can be obtained uh, by using the theory of elasticity uh, by the following expression that is u e upon r e is equal to 1 plus mu upon e into p naught minus sigma r e. So, let us keep this equation as equation number 14. So, your equation 10 was uh, sigma r e as p naught minus m times sigma c. So, from the therefore from equation number 14 what you can get is uh, that u e is equal to 1 plus mu upon e m into sigma c into r e. So, I will make this equation as equation number 15. Now, if uh, e average be the average plastic volumetric strain which is associated with the uh, passage of the rock from the original to the broken state. So, here uh, when we say that the original state means it is the elastic state that we are talking about and when we talk about the broken state means we are in the plastic domain or the plastic state. So, this plastic volumetric strain this is going to be uh, positive for the reduction in volume and this can be evaluated by the application of normality principle and the plastic flow rule which was d epsilon p is equal to d lambda del f del sigma this we saw earlier. Now, if we compare the volumes of the broken zone before and after its uh, formation what we can get is that it will be pi r e square minus r i square and in the direction perpendicular to the plane of screen I am considering the unit dimension so that I am multiplying it by 1. This is going to be equal to pi r e plus u e whole square minus 
आर आई माइनस यू आई आर आई प्लस यू आई होल स्क्वायर इनटू वन माइनस ई एवरेज टेक द रेफरेंस ऑफ द फिगर दैट आई शोड यू व्हेन वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द एनालिसिस ऑफ डेफॉर्मेशन and uh, you will realize that before the formation it is this and after the formation since there is uh, some radial displacement so that we have to account for so this is how we can uh, get the expression when we compare the volumes of the uh, broken zone before and after its uh, formation so here we have this uh, plastic flow rule which is d lambda del f del sigma or is equal to d lambda del f sigma 1 sigma 3 because it is the stress vector this one is have uh, this one will have uh, the components like this epsilon p maybe this is d epsilon 1 plastic d epsilon 3 plastic or uh, we will have the volumetric strain that will be in terms e average so when we substitute uh, this uh, equation 16 uh, that will give us u i s r i o 1 minus 1 minus e average by 1 plus capital a to the power half and this equation i will make it as equation number 18 where this a is expressed as two times u e upon r e minus e average and multiplied by r e upon r i whole square now if we substitute for terms r e upon r i and u e upon r e from the respective equations 12 and 15 what we get is uh, the expression for a as 2 1 plus mu upon e m time sigma c Minus e average into e to the power two n minus four upon m r into sigma c m r sigma c p i plus s r sigma c whole square to the power half. This is equation number twenty. so basically this complete expression is in exponential uh the expression for e average uh, uh, can be written therefore as uh, e average as two times u e upon r e r e upon r i whole square divided by R e upon R i whole square minus one into one plus one upon R. Where this R is the factor whose value depends upon. the thickness of the broken zone so basically uh, if you look at the original paper by ladani uh, so he has uh, given the detailed derivation for this uh, expression but uh, Uh, since these days uh, we have uh, the lot of computational facility so we don't need to really go into uh, those details but if you are interested maybe you can refer back to uh, that so coming to this factor again 
what should be its value so in case if uh, there is a relatively thin broken zone which is defined by the expression that is re upon ri is less than square root of uh, 3 in that case r is given as 2 d ln r e upon r i equation number 22 and in case if you have the thick broken zone uh, represented by r e upon r i more than square root of 3 r will be given by 1.1 times d now here comes another uh, term which is d so where we have this d as a function of m s and sigma c and it is defined as minus m upon m plus 4 times m sigma r e upon sigma c plus s to the power half. So, let me make this as equation number 23 and this as equation number 24. So, this is how we can determine the analysis of stresses and uh, the deformation. So, by following this analysis now we can find out uh, that what will be the state of stresses sigma r and sigma theta and also we can find out uh, what is going to be the uh, deformations. So, uh, like this we can uh, generate the ground response curve. So, in the next class we will learn about the analysis with respect to the support system with reference to Ladani's elastoplastic analysis of tunnels. Thank you very much.